one of the most scary scripture for me in the Bible was what happened in um, I think that should be Matthew chapter 4 the temptation of Jesus the Bible says after he was baptized the Spirit of God drove him to the wilderness he did not go to the wilderness to drink and smoke he went to pray Jesus as the word and prayed and fasted for 40 days guess who he saw first when he was done Satan how do you see Satan as the first person to welcome you after praying and fasting for 40 days you would think the prayer will drive him but the prayer was bringing him the tempter the Bible will usually tell you what capacity Satan is coming as whether as a deceiver as what now in this capacity he came as a tempter and he looked at Jesus eyeball to eyeball do you look at Jesus and not shake and fall down after fasting and prayer with the power of the Holy Ghost the Word of God anointed again what should make someone powerful that was not in him and yet Satan walked as if he was not seeing him he said mr. man you are hungry admit it you are anointed but you are hungry uh, I, I know that you are you created the heavens and the earth but you need food now and Jesus did not say no, I'm, I know I'm, I'm the lion of the tribe no Satan discerned he was not there but he said you are hungry let me show you that you still you have a problem with all your anointing there is hunger how do you bring such a demeaning statement to such El Shaddai the man who created the heavens and the earth and he says turn this stone to bread and Jesus said no my agenda is greater than my individual satisfaction it is not about me the next temptation the Bible says he took him to the top of the temple a place of worship with people praying there and yet Satan stood at the top of the church and said mr. man I'm dropping you here fall down for it is written so don't think I'm ignorant he shall put his angels charge over you they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against the stone don't forget who Satan is talking to here Jesus so don't be carried away by the fact that Michael threw him down from heaven he's standing with Jesus now and he's talking to Jesus as if Michael were greater than him number three the Bible says he picked him up not that he said follow me he held him and took him into an exceeding high the, the Bible says he took him more how do you take somebody hmm. he took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them because every kingdom there are three things that make a kingdom a, every kingdom must have glory it must have the power and authority that backs it represented by the scepter are we together now and it must have inhabitants there and the Bible says he showed them the glory and here's what he said verse 9 Satan now you don't know how stubborn he is all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me and Jesus said verse 10 get thee ten Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve then the Bible makes a very scary statement it says and the devil leaveth him in fact one synoptic account said he left him for a season that in other words don't think as I'm going you will not see me again mm -mm. provided you left heaven and came to it you will find me the next time Satan would come he did not come directly to him again he came through one of the most disciplined and emotional person called Peter he chose one who was the leader over the people and he manipulated Peter's compassion to beg Jesus not to die he said Jesus you know don't don't go to the cross don't do this and and he rebuked him and said get be behind me Satan Peter said me I just finished talking to you about the church I'm, I'm 
and he says satan desire to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren satan left and said you saw me the next time satan will come people were having dinner and he came through the treasurer you see why finance department in many ministries must pray like prayer warriors too there is nobody in any ministry who, not, who should not be a prayer warrior. Don't say mine is just to join wire. You pray because the devil will use anybody and anything. Are we together? Satan came through Judas. I hope you know that the goal of Judas was not to destroy Jesus. That's why he could not do anything with the money. The goal was to make money from Jesus. Jesus was misusing privileges, financial opportunities were passing him up and down. And he said, do you know what? Let me last with you and give you Jesus and then leave him to deal with you and show you his savior. So he was surprised when Jesus gave himself and he said, no, this was not the plan. And he went and hung himself. Don't think Judas was a bad man. No. For Jesus to trust Judas with money, he was one of the most trusted people there. <laughs> you know I was laughing someone shared a very interesting story that kidnappers kidnapped someone's child and they demanded for 50 million and the family called them and said all they have is 50,000 <laughs> and the kidnappers insulted them and off the phone <laughs> in anger and said if they don't bring up to 5 million they will finish the people and the man said honestly there's nothing they can do they should just keep <laughs> Are we together? In other words, we've done our best. Whatever it is, at least we're sure he's born again. <laughs> Let him. Amen. All men can be weary. People can go through challenges in their lives. And so it is not unusual, the Bible says. But let me tell you this. There are basically three reasons, and I want you to listen very carefully. There are three reasons that cause, or three factors that are responsible for these seasons of frustration, hardship, challenges. I want you to listen very carefully. Every one of us seated under the sound of my voice would have gone through or will go through one or more of these seasons. Are you ready? The first reason why people become weak, why people become fatigued spiritually and otherwise, why people become discouraged, the very first reason, listen carefully, is what I, I term the deference of hope or hope deferred. Write it down, please. disappointed expectations can dampen people's spiritual lives disappointed expectations can dampen people's finances you put your money in the business or an investment and it crashes and you're in trouble you try to buy a land eventually you find out there's a court case around that land and they tell you they'll get back to you or you submit your cv and for a long time, two, three years, you know, sometimes I wonder when people share testimonies here and then they say, after I did this and that, or maybe when the word came, a job I applied for for three, four years now called me. Can you imagine how long that? The, the issue is not the miracle. The issue is the endurance to have waited three, four years. Are we together? The difference of hope. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Write it down, please. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And when the desire cometh, the Bible says it is a tree of life. Please look at me. Do you know why many young people in this country are already beginning to face 
medical conditions that you would think only people in their late 50s and 60s right now you can see a young boy in his early 20s having the same symptom with someone who is probably 65 seven years because of hope deferred haven't spent five six seven ten years multiple programs in school 